Uh, I did promise I was going to do my Avengers Endgame review today, so I'm not going to go real in-depth on it. I'm just going to kind of give a general overview, and I'm going to do it spoiler-free, so don't freak out. If I do accidentally give away a spoiler, I'm sorry, but I don't think that I will. So essentially, the main thing that I took away from it was, wow, they, they actually pulled it off. And I didn't think they were going to, because there was just such an insane amount of hype. Just a ridiculous, gargantuan level of hype. This is the first time in the history of America there has ever been a series that had anywhere close to this many movies. I would guess, if I had to think, maybe Rocky Balboa, that series, probably has a similar... Uh, it, 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 I think it's got eight now, doesn't it? Because you've got Rocky 1 through 5, and then Rocky Balboa is 6, and then the two Creed movies... So that would be eight, yeah. This one had 22. That's a lot. That's more than double Rocky. And you may have some straight-to-home TV movies like The Land Before Time that's got, like, I don't know, 18 at this point. But as far as big-budget, in-the-theater kind of movies, this is the only one that even comes close. And there was so much hype and so much buildup, and it's been over a decade that they've been working on this. It's bigger than Harry Potter or The Lord of the Rings. And so the fact that they finally brought it all into one movie, and this is the culmination, this is the big finale of the whole series, and the way that they were actually able to bring it together, holy cow, they actually pulled it off. And to give you fair warning, and this was something that was speculated on, so I'm not really spoiling anything at this point because this has just been everywhere and it's more or less been confirmed by Marvel. There are other movies in the Marvel universe that are going to come after this one. For example, you've probably even seen the trailers of Spider-Man far from home, which is coming out later this year. There is a black Panther two that has been confirmed, but as far as the Marvel universe, in other words, the Avenger series of films, this is it. Maybe they could change their mind later. But as far as the Avengers themselves, and what I'm talking about is Cap and Hulk and Iron Man and Black Widow and Hawkeye, all those guys, that core group, they're done. This was it. And I got to say, I respect that. One of the anime series, for example, that I respect more than any of them is Full Metal Alchemist. And the reason that I do is a lot of animes drag on for so many seasons and it seems like they never stop going because they're continuing to make money. The Full Metal Alchemist series basically just said, we're going to tell our story and then we're done. Because they were primarily concerned with the quality of the story itself. And I think that's kind of what Avengers did here. That they know they could make more money, they know they could make more movies, and maybe there was some fatigue, fatigue from the actors, but they could have written around them in some way. And I'm sure that there are going to be future Marvel Universe movies and, and maybe even mashups like Civil War or like Ragnarok that featured Hulk and Thor. But as far as the big, massive Avengers movie saga, that's done. And I really respect them for having the courage to do that as insanely profitable as this thing has been. And as far as story goes, there's a couple things that I did want to mention without, again, giving away any spoilers. You do have to watch all the movies first. And I'm fine with that. In fact, I prefer it. Because this movie rewards you for being a fan. And I love that when a series does that. You'll watch this, for example, in, in a lot of sitcoms. Seinfeld, for example. If you get into about season 8, season 7 of Seinfeld, you don't really understand half the jokes unless you're a fan of the show and have watched several episodes. It's not that you won't find it funny at all, it's just that there are a lot of jokes that are predicated on past experiences. The same could be true, uh, you could say the same thing of How I Met Your Mother, to a degree, Friends. And so, knowing the characters makes it a much more enriching experience because you're not confused about what's going on. There's some nuances that even points that you'll understand, like the conflict or the humor. They make more sense when you have the context of the previous movies. And so, for anybody that wants to see this movie that is asking, okay, which movies can I watch and which ones can I skip to watch this one? My advice, just watch all of them. And I know there will be people that get frustrated with that, but... That's that's honestly my advice. If you want to really get everything that you can out of this movie, if you really want to enhance your enjoyment of it to the max, you got to watch every movie. 
And if you miss one, especially the Guardians, especially the Captain America movies, you're just going to be lost. There are a few that you could probably skip and not lose that much, but especially this one. And again, I'm really dancing around the spoilers here. This one, more than any of the other Marvel movies in the series, really depends on you knowing the Marvel Universe. It really depends on you knowing these characters and having an appreciation for what they've been through in the past movies. And there's going to be some points where you don't really understand what's going on unless you've seen all of them. But I mean, I'm not asking you to, to you know, dig a canal. I'm asking you to watch a bunch of really enjoyable movies. So that would be my advice. You can't really skip any of the movies. You got to watch all of them. Another thing too, humor is really more abundant. In Infinity War, even though I thought it was a pretty good movie, the one thing that I thought was kind of lacking that the other Avengers movies had is there, there was a real abundance of humor. I mean, everybody remembers probably the most memorable scene in the first Avengers is actually not the big battle scene or that, you know, that scene in the battle where they're doing the, the swirly camera thing where they're painting across all of them and you see all six Avengers finally assemble. The most memorable one is Hulk tearing into Loki and then... Uh, it was just so funny and so enjoyable. That's something that you're going to get a lot of in this movie. Infinity War kind of scaled the humor down a little bit. This one actually ratchets it up, and it's not overly cheesy or quippy. It's really good humor. And it's surprising that a movie that has such a dark tone and so many bad things that happen in this film have such great humor mixed into it to lighten the mood. And so the humor has not been this good, in my opinion, since the first Avengers. That was the last time the humor in one of these movies was that good. Uh, with the exception, I guess, of Spider-Man Homecoming. There was there was a lot of really good humor in Spider-Man Homecoming, but I would still say that this one does an even better job, maybe even more so than the Guardians of the Galaxy when it comes to using humor. And that is no small compliment. So props to them. I really like the way that they worked that in. It was very Marvel Universe-esque, and I appreciated it. And another thing that... I was really expecting. I was expecting the movie to be a little too crowded and to not give its due diligence to the personal stories of the characters. And that's the challenge of doing any kind of superhero team up movie. Some of the Avengers movies in the past have been kind of accused of this. And when it comes to the X-Men, when you've got like 18 mutants in a movie, it's really hard to give proper time to explain their backstory and their powers and everything. Luckily, because there is such a big buildup to this movie, you don't need a whole lot of backstory. And they really do spend a considerable amount of time on each of the Avengers, especially the core six. I mean, it definitely pays homage to Black Panther and Ant-Man and, and some of the other characters. And, and by the way, I'm saying that specifically to explain that um, you know, because there's also flashbacks and, and there's a lot going on here. But the point is, even though there's a lot of crew, there's a lot of Avengers to talk about, it gives adequate time to all of them, especially the core six, and kind of wrapping up their stories. And for the most part, even though there are things that I might have taken in a slightly different direction if I were directing it, I think in each case, they did a good job. There's one that didn't really get a lot of resolution, and I suspect that that may be because he's going to wind up getting a little bit more story resolution in a different movie. Could be wrong, but that's just kind of what I'm, I'm thinking from, from the perspective that I saw and sort of the way that they left that storyline dangling just a little bit. But again, I don't want to give anything away here. And it's just, they did such a good job with it. It was far more personal than I expected because you've got this big cosmic clash of, uh, really the, the Avengers fighting for the entire universe. And it's so big and so epic. And sometimes when movies do that, you lose the personal touch. You lose that personal connection to some of the individual characters. This movie does a really good job of balancing that, that you understand the stakes, you understand what they're fighting for. But unlike the last movie, while there's still a heavy focus on action, the action is a part of the overall story and the personal journey that these characters go through. And I think that it's really enriching, really well done. And finally, what I liked about it, and maybe this is just because I'm such a big comic book nerd, but it's a mix of so many different genres and worlds. 
because you've got the Guardians, which are primarily a comedy series. You've got the Avengers, which are very action focused. You've got Spider-Man that's kind of a, a mix of both. You've got all these different worlds that are coming together. You've got fantasy with Thor, for example. You've got sci-fi with Guardians of the Galaxy. You've got really an old World, uh, World War II war hero with Captain America. You've got sort of a Frankenstein kind of thing going on with Hulk. And what's really great about it is, and this is one of the reasons that I like comic books in general, is it's a real blend of those worlds. And so without giving away any scenes that are specific, you may have a sci-fi character at one point wielding a battle axe or a spear and riding on a horse. I mean, it's just something that's so utterly ridiculous and weird and far-fetched, but it works. And that's the reason that comics are really fascinating. One example that I, I thought of just now was sort of in uh, The New Avengers, which is a comic book series that I read a while back where it's uh, Spider-Woman and uh, Wolverine and Cap and Spider-Man and, and a bunch of these other heroes. They come across in the Savage Lands, which is primarily associated with the X-Men. They come across a barbarian character with a giant club riding a T-Rex. And Spider-Man's like, hey, I know that guy. And then Spider-Woman reacts with, He's a half-naked man riding a dinosaur. Of course you do. And that's just such a comic book thing. And that's what I like about it is that it has such a feel of a comic book. That there's this weird mashup of all these different genres and characters that are so diverse and so colorful. And I mean that, of course, in the uh, figurative sense, that they're very colorful uh, individuals. And somehow they make it all work together. And that's probably the thing that I would compliment the movie on the most that they had so many moving parts and so many things to keep up with. And so far as I can tell, they did as far as I can tell, they did an amazing job of keeping it together and bringing it all into one experience. That's very, very satisfying and very fun to watch. So props to Avengers Endgame. You guys actually pulled it off. Oh, Hey, what are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell, and if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.